the Joe Rogan experience. It's good for the UFC. It's good for everybody. In and my for mind, people say that. Yeah. Say, oh, did you ever think about going Bellator one? In my mind, it's great fighters everywhere. Mm -hmm. But right now, I still think the number one and all of is in the UFC. Yes. The number one martial art is in the UFC. And right now, that's my goal. Yeah. The money and all, that's all great, but I'm here to be the best. I can go to one and make a killing. I can go to Bellator and get my sponsors back. But I'm in no rush to leave here because I want to be the best. Yeah. Like after I prove that, if there's nothing else, and then it's like, okay, now I'm ready for the money, then that's maybe an option, but there's no I'm contest. The in terms of prestige, there's no contest. No. If you get the UFC title, you're the best. That's it. There's no question like, oh, what yeah. about the Bellator? This is this because the Bellator champ <laughs> well, lost especially, to John Jones already. Yeah, and especially and all that. in your division. You know, in your division you have one of the best guys of all time, if not the best guy of all time mm -hmm. as a champion. So when you see a guy like John at the top of the heap, is that is that motivating to you to just ramp up it even harder because you realize that the guy who's a champion in your division is not just the best light heavyweight of all time, maybe the best martial artist of all time? It ramps up so much. Like I, I'm riding the bike in my basement. <clears throat> I got the air down bike and stationary bike, and I got the projector. And I'm down there. Only thing I want is fight pass. You know, I'm watching fight pass. I'm usually watching John Jones. You know, to see him dominate other guys, and I, you just hear that bike. You can hear the the pedals start picking on. He gets into like mm. a brawl, some crazy. And like I don't even be looking down at the clock, but I can just hear <laughs> the air, the fan picking up. Right. And I don't even realize it till like it goes to break, and I slow it down. And my heart rate's like, <laughs> and I'm just watching, I'm just like that's. Yeah. Like if I want to get there, I gotta I gotta beat him to be the best. Right. So I need to work hard. What's your sure What's does. your take on him? You can't take away what he does in the sport. What is his outside, his personal life? That's all. He say, she say. I had my words after the the California stuff. We went to two twenty six or whatever the fight it was in Vegas and got moved here because of his lifestyle, right. the drug tests, and all that extra stuff. However you want to code it up, it's past. You know, I'm done with it. But I, I had my words there. The fact he kept using God and Jesus and this, this, and this. And I'm a God-fearing guy who read my Bible every morning. And I don't like the fact that you can, that he would do that. I'm like, I'm not only now, but at the time, my words was the fact that he did that. And then at the same time, when I'm interviewing him, so I want to thank God. And it's, it's, that kind of rubbed me wrong. And then we flew on the plane together. And like I said, I saw the way he was acting. When he came on the plane, like, we're not doing this because of him. Like, all that at the time bothered me. And I was a pent-up engine. That was something else going into that fight. That was something on my shoulders because I had posted something. Because when uh, UFC called me, right before I got on the flight, they was like, oh, don't come. I'm on my way to Vegas now. I got my wife. She's eight months pregnant. Like, she's 30 weeks, whatever. She can't travel after this. She's struggling. We hauling bags. And y'all call me now. I say, don't come. This and this. Go back home. We're going to fly you out again. Like, I'm not doing this again. And then when they get to the, well, we can get you here, but we get you to Cali, but we can't take your wife. Like, what? Like, well, you we pay your ticket and the coach ticket. Like, no, fuck that. All because John Jones, this, that, that's what got me mad. The, so the they were trying to save money by much. not flying people? To because we was, all, we was literally walking down the, the runway to the plane when they called me. Jesus Christ. And like, turn around. But then when we got there, like, okay, you come here, but we can get you to Cali, but we couldn't get your, your wife to Cali. Like, my wife is 30 weeks pregnant. She's here with me. She's coming. Like, well, we, we don't know what to do because you bought her ticket. Isn't it? Like, what do you mean you don't know what to do? Get her another ticket. Like, I pay for my family. What about the people that's on the way right now? Like, oh, they got to find their own way. And that made fight me wrong. Fight week. Fight week. The week of the fight. The thing of the things that you have to think about. To you be know? fucking with that. That's the last thing I need to worry about. God damn. And then I get there. And they tell me, when you get, make sure you got your workout. If you don't have your workout schedule with the PI set already, as soon as you get there, go do it. I did mine like a month and a half ahead of time. I'm all I'm like I said, I'm punctual. Like I like having stuff done. Yeah. I'm getting ready to go to the PI. I'm packing my bags and I get a call. Oh, you can't come to the PI. Why? John just came in and said he wanna work out, so we closing the gym down and you're not allowed. Y'all called me two months ago and told me to set my schedule to come ahead of time. I'm literally getting ready to walk to my Uber that's outside and you say I can't come now? Like I'm sorry, nothing we can do is John. Why can't you work out at the same place where John's working no out? Clue. You're not fighting. It's the John. same thing with Connor's there. And I'm there in the summer and Connor show up, they're coming to tell everybody, you gotta leave. Like what? what? Connor just throw it up. Yeah. Really? You walk out and Connor just have you his car parked leave? up on the sidewalk. Come on. Yeah, they have security guards block the stairs off and everything. Get the You're not fuck allowed out to go of here. Up here. I'm Ew. telling you. Yes. Ew. Ew, exactly. That's you walk gross. out and like you heard somebody That's say That's a big place. Yeah. But you can go to the cardio room and the weights, but you can't use the upstairs with the cage and the bag and stuff is. You can't use the like, if he's in the cage. They have security you can't use the, bags. the stairs, so you can't go up what there. What the fuck is that about? That's just the people. I don't it's know. It's not my people. <laughs> I'm an <laughs> independent contractor, <laughs> sir. <laughs> but yeah, like that stuff. It kind of rubbed me wrong, and that's when it was kind of like, 
if I was a champ, I wouldn't want that. No. Yeah, you know I mean, I no. want people to be able to see what I'm doing. Maybe they it's can watch me and see. I don't know. I mean, but. you know, you got to think about how much death threats that guy must get, yeah. how much shit he must take. You know, I mean, he's as popular as he is, as famous as he is. Maybe he just has overzealous security. Maybe. And they just want to tighten it down so they don't want anybody up there. Yeah, they kept, I was so, that was the first time I've ever cursed at a UFC employee. Yeah. Like, my wife came on the show, I was cursed, like, going off. Like, y'all want me to change my whole workout schedule, fight week. I'm cutting weight, too, you know? Like, it's not just John. Yeah. Like, we in the same division. I don't give a fuck about none of that. I don't care what he's doing. I need to go up there and get a workout. My coach is meeting me there from the airport, but we can't do nothing about it, Corey. And the guy kept hanging up because I was going on. That is and ridiculous. And they were calling me back. And I was like, yo. And then people hit me up like, I'm glad you're actually voicing yourself. I'm hearing around you, the PI right now. Everybody talking about how you're mad. And somebody texts me like, I'm glad you're actually speaking out because everybody else is kind of like, okay. Like, no. Like, okay. and if it wasn't for my wife being there, I probably wouldn't took the same. But I see the way she's struggling to carry this belly around. And mm-hmm. She's hurting. Yeah, you know, of she's, course. Eight months. Yeah. It's she like could this, give birth at any moment. Anytime. Yeah. So the stress, is, I'm sure it's like all that. My baby's Even health. worse. So sure. I'm really. Yeah. It was ramping me up. And my wife came like, Corey, just stop. Calm down. It'll be okay. This is this. Like, it ain't the fact of being okay. It's the fact that they letting one person dictate it all. Yeah. Like, we're all equal. Right yeah. now, they're treating us like a number. He's John Jones, but we're number 4,722. Right. You know what I mean? I don't like that. No. He's John. I'm Corey. Like I was telling Will on the way here, the reason I love Rose Nama Eunice because I've never seen that from her. She's a champ, but you would see her and she would act just like Rose before when she was an Invictus. Yeah. She doesn't change. I don't want no special treatment from her or from anybody if I was a champ. Treat right. me the same. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, 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 some people are different. Like I said, I don't know if it's John or his camp that was doing that or UFC's doing or right. security or what. But it rubbed me wrong that we aren't equal anymore. No, that's understandable. But that's also got to give you some motivation, right? Exactly. Like yeah. I told him in the area of the one, I was sitting on the plane and I was literally directly behind John Jones. And I see his head bobbing. And I was just looking. I looked at my wife and she's like struggling, like falling asleep, but struggling to fall asleep. And I looked at the top of his head, the back of his head. And I was just like, it's time for a change of the torch. Like my brother always said, like, you're good. And you know you can beat everybody. But I feel like when it comes to those top guys like John Jones and Gus, you doubt yourself just a little bit. You ain't sure that you can get them yet. Mm. You know you're good, but you feel like this is before, like before the Lear fight. You get there and you you feel like you don't think you're ready for that. But I'm telling you, I watched you, bro. I know what you made up. You can do it. And when I sat there and saw him bobbing and all the frustration going through my mind, 6 o'clock in the morning, we had to get up and catch a plane because this guy, this is this. They say, show up on time. He still was late to that. And it was just like, I, if I'm the champ, I don't want this. You know what I mean? I don't want no special treatment. If you tell me, Sign up ahead of time and keep your schedule. I expect that. If we get down to scale, first come, first serve. First come, first serve. If I show up late, put me in the order I am. Mm. Don't put me up front because I'm the champ. Because I was the first or second person there. I'm on my way to scale. And John was walking down the stairs fully dressed. We went back to the commission room. And I remember people in the blue shirt came and said, hold up, hold up. And all of a sudden, John come in. He could do all the paperwork. He went on the scale and he was out. He was the last person down. How was it he's first? Like, it wasn't that big of a deal. But the fact, like, I don't like that. Well, it's because he's headlining the card, right? Yeah. They, oh, so they're stuff. giving that's him the, special treatment. Everything. That's what they kept saying. It's yeah. John Jones. Every time I got the phone, well, it's John Jones. And they hang up. Like, I don't like that. It's still He's still a person. Well, he's it's the motivation greatest there is, but for he's still you a person. to be Corey Anderson. 100%. It's Corey Anderson. And change the tide. Yeah. Like, it's Corey Anderson. It's Corey Anderson, but yeah. treat me normal. Don't yeah. give me no special well, treatment. Beautiful that you have that attitude. What when you look at John, you look at John's skills. Like, what do you think you need to do, in, if anything, different in your life or in your training, or where do you need to get to where you think you could beat him? Just keep getting better. As like I the Leo Latife fight must have been a, a big boost for one hundred percent. Every fight last year, every fight, even the ones I lost, has all been a boost. Cause you go back and see, tell me a fight that I've been getting beat up, Joe. Right. I've never been a fight where somebody, they all call you too small, you're not good. There's never been one fight in my career where somebody straight manhandled me and pushed me around. You know what I mean? They talk about this, this, and this. Uh, he's the greatest this, he's the greatest that. I was watching a UFC main event last night in the hotel. They had the Glover Rashad fight, and they're talking about this and this and this and up. And Glover's this, Glover that, Glover this, Glover's that. Nothing like, I beat that guy. You know, and you're here talking about, I hope they don't give a little TV or Johnny Walker a little TV. He's super good, this is this. But at the same time, I was thinking, and you said it, but what about Corey? And I was like, there we go. Finally, somebody, <laughs> like all these guys, that talk, they talk about how good these guys are, not and beat them all. Yeah. Like, I'm that guy coming underneath the radar, and they don't expect me to do nothing because I lost to Gian Vellante, my third or fourth fight in the UFC, two years of my career. You know what I mean? Uh, Jimmy Manuel. Jimmy Manuel. I told Will on the way here, too. Jimmy Manuel was the only fight I would say a guy beat me. He didn't manhandle me. 
But in my head, from his highlights, and it's all, like you said, on Instagram, reading comments, mm -hmm. and I let what people were saying and reading and seeing get in my head to think, if this guy touches me, he's going to put me out. And when you go into a fight thinking that, I literally got touched, and my mind was already set. Like, if I get hit, I'm going out. And, like, I think subconsciously, like, I had myself so doubted that when he hit me, my mind just, like, in panic, kind of shut down. Mm. Because I remember when I hit the mat, like, I wasn't out to I remember. I was out, but I remember seeing his feet walk away. And I remember when I came to clearly. And I thought to myself, like, it happened. Exactly what I put in my mind. If I got hit, it happened. And after that, that was it. It was like, I can take I can take it to anybody. And I think OSP was more dangerous than Jimmy because he can kick. He was explosive. And this isn't the end punch. And I did everything right and just slipped into the punch the wrong way. But yeah. I was manhandling him for three rounds. I mean, it's simple mistakes because I didn't have the discipline yet. In three years of my career, I hadn't learned a discipline and focus that it's a 15-minute fight. Right. I can win 12 minutes of it all, but one mistake and it's all gone. Well, the, the experience of making those mistakes and realizing what they are and and then when those moments come up again and you deviate from the game plan and you do go to your right and you do move the wrong direction, you know, you'll, you'll catch yourself. Mm -hmm. You'll realize. It's the experience of competition for a fighter is there's nothing that substitutes it. You can have great talent, you can have a great mindset, but the experience of competition is like nothing else. <laughs>